Okay, it's Jeff here from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and you just heard the volume of my hot tub. You heard how loud that was. You even saw on a decibel measure how many decibels that was. The thing is kind of loud. I love my hot tub. This is a master spa hot tub. It was here when I moved in, so I didn't purchase it. It's probably about 10 years old and it's in great shape. I've not had to do anything major to it since we moved in about two and a half years ago. However, volume is not its forte. So today in this video, we're gonna take a look at a few things and see if we can quiet this noisy pig. So to do that, I'm gonna have to move the camera over to my side and take off the side panel over there near where the heater is. That's basically where the noise is coming from, the pump and the heater section. So we're gonna move the camera take off that panel over there so we can see if we can if there's anything we can do to quiet this thing so let's get into that now okay so to get to the heart of the hot tub I've got to remove this panel here to do that I just take off these thumb screws that are on the side over here they just turn with your fingers I'm missing one normally there's three thumb screws here I'm just gonna set them up here as you see, that little panel just kind of flops off. I'm going to set that, all of that aside. Then I'm going to come back to the middle. All right, so I'm just going to kind of lift up and pry this thing out and set it down. Then I'm just going to set this aside, get that out of our way. So this is the heart of our hot tub. I've got two pumps and then I've got the heater and control pack right here. Now, this is where the noise is coming from. As you can see, there's insulation here and there's insulation down here, but there's nothing really preventing sound from coming out this way. And as you saw, that plastic panel is not insulated whatsoever. So the first thing I wanna check though, is I wanna make sure that these things are screwed down tightly. After all, they are moving and vibrating. And over time, these bolts could come loose a little bit and cause excess vibrations. I see that they require pliers or at least some sort of wrench. So I'm gonna go get some tools right now and see if I can check how tight all of these are, not only on this, but on each pump as well. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I'm gonna use my wrench here to see if these are tight down here. These are the bolts that are holding the control pack into place. They're just kind of bolted into the wood here. I do see that it's letting me tighten, which means it's not fully tight. All right, that one was definitely a little bit loose. Got probably almost a full turn on it before it snugged up. The other thing I'm noticing with this one is that at one time there was a leak here and it looks like it's corroded that bolt a little bit. So at some point in the near future, it probably wouldn't hurt for me to actually replace these because they're, gonna, they're getting kind of calcified and they could probably degrade over time. Now this back one is a little bit hard to reach. Let's see if I can reach it at all. It's a little bit hard to reach. Hard to reach that way, hard to reach this way. So I'm not gonna worry about the back ones right this moment. I was able to tighten both of these. Uh, let me check the pumps here. All right, this pump, that bolt on this pump is really loose. So that should give me some, a little bit of quiet right there. And if one is loose, chances are all of them are loose. This isn't hard to do. It's just a little awkward to reach. All right, this one is also really super loose. So that tells me it's probably worth my time trying to get access to the ones in back. And I think at this point, if I'm reaching around back behind here with, a, with pliers and trying to tighten something I can't see, it's probably worth cutting the power just in case. After all, this is connected to a 220 volt circuit and I certainly don't want to touch the wrong thing accidentally with these metal pliers. I already have the power cut right now. I typically do that when I'm recording my videos just so that uh, it doesn't kick on and make a lot of noise while I'm doing my videos. But if you're trying to do this, definitely cut the power first just to be safe. But I'm gonna reach back here with these pliers and see if I can tighten them. I'm not gonna bore you with the details 
of watching me tighten bolts. That's not a very exciting video, I know. I just wanted you to kind of get an idea of some of the very first things to check here. The next thing that we're going to look at is I'm going to check these two screws here on the control box. Uh, this gives you access to the internal workings of the, the control box here, and then the heater tube is down here. But these two screws are Phillips screws, and they, of course, could come loose just like anything else down here. So that's what I'm going to check next. Okay, so I'm. if you notice, I don't have a cordless drill. I just want to kind of snug these up by hand. I don't want to use a drill which all with which could power overpower it maybe even strip the screw just kind of wanted to snug those up by hand but i've done that this one was a little loose this one was not so probably not a ton of noise coming from this vibrating specifically now the, of course the next thing we want to look at is the panel that sits here um, and how much vibration is affecting it. And, and, and in other words, how much noise is that generating just by vibrating? Of course, it sits up against the acrylic shell on the inside here, and then it sits on these brackets down here, which are made of metal. And nothing about any of that is soft or insulated in any way. So the first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to put some kind of foam tape down here, and maybe along the top ridge of the panel, and just to kind of like soften it, get something to absorb that sound when it's vibrating. So let's, let's do that now. Okay, I hope you can see me now. I did actually have to finish this video the next day as I started to run out of sunlight. So it is actually the next day. We've got four of these metal brackets across the bottom here that hold that plastic panel in place. Like I mentioned earlier, they're metal. And then the panel, of course, is just empty plastic. It's, it's hollow plastic. Nothing about it is going to protect sound from escaping. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to put some weather stripping down here in these, on these brackets. Like I mentioned, there's four of them. I'm going to use this stuff. It's basically just kind of window seal that I bought at the hardware store. I bought the extra small size because I don't want it to, um, I don't want to have to cut any more than I have to to fit in here. And also, I don't want it so thick that it makes it difficult to get the panel in and out. So the first thing we're going to do is just put some of this tape, cut it to size. We're just going to kind of put it right in that groove. And then I'm going to do that to all four of these. Again, I'm not going to bore you with the details of watching me do that four different times. I'm just going to show it to you once, and then you're going to know that I've done it four times total. I'm going to put that in there. Of course, it's got adhesive on one side. Then I'm just going to kind of cut it flush on the end. Just like that. That's going to give us a little bit of cushion here on the bottom. I'm probably also going to apply it to the top of the panel to keep it from vibrating inside of bouncing around inside the acrylic shell. But let's do this first. Like I mentioned, I've got four of these. I'm not going to bore you with watching me do it to all four, though. Okay, so I've done all four of those brackets on the bottom. This is the panel that normally sits right here. This is actually the top side that goes underneath this acrylic shell right here. And there's acrylic shell on one side. The back side in places feels like two by four, and then there's actually nothing right here. Uh, there is a little bit of what feels like spray on foam across the top. So that tells me that the top may not need it as much as the front here. Uh, so I'm going to apply that here. It does feel like there's plenty of room in terms of the front to back to accommodate a thin strip of that weather stripping here uh, without making it too difficult to put this panel back in place. So I'm going to run this weather stripping now from one side all the way down to the other, again, on the front side of this thing here. So I'm going to do that now. All right, now that I've gone all the way down from one side to the other, I'm just gonna kind of press this just to make sure it sticks. Don't know exactly how much difference this is gonna make, but we are gonna check the dB meter at the end of this. There's still one more thing I'm gonna do after this though, but when all is said and done, we're gonna check the dB meter and see how much of a difference all of these things made. But now we're going to move on to the final step, which is 
cutting foam panels to fit in some of these openings to prevent excess sound from traveling out this way. So let me show you what I mean. So this is a giant sheet of styrofoam about three quarters of an inch. And what I'm going to do, if we can drop down a little bit here, is I'm going to cut out some inserts that are gonna fit inside of this. After all, it can't stick out here, otherwise it would intrude on where this plastic panel is gonna go. It needs to sit recessed. So like for instance, in this opening, and then maybe in this opening, as space allows, I may not be able to do the entire thing, but I figure anything is gonna help and anything is gonna be better than not doing anything. So I'm gonna cut out those sections now. I'm just gonna use duct tape to kind of hold them in place. And then when all is said and done, like I mentioned, we're gonna get out that DB meter and we're gonna check it again and see how much of a difference we made. Again, these are all DIY fixes. They didn't cost a lot of money. The most expensive thing was the sheet of styrofoam, which is about 30 bucks. The, uh, the weather stripping insulation that I put down here and on the, the, pa the plastic panel is about four bucks. Nothing expensive, nothing requiring any high level of engineering skill or anything like that. Uh, just a little trial and error here, but we're going to see how much difference it made here in just a minute. But now I'm going to cut out some sections of this styrofoam. Okay, I think you can see just how relatively easy that was to do. I'm not too concerned about the smoothness of the cuts of the styrofoam because ultimately no one's going to see this other than me the next time I have to do some sort of maintenance down here. It's all going to be covered by this plastic panel. I'm going to go ahead and do cutouts for here and here and down here as well. Again, I don't want anything to protrude that would prevent me from getting this plastic panel back in place here. So everything's gonna be recessed here, but I'll reconvene here in the video once I've got the whole thing done. Okay, so I think you can see here that I've got my panels in place. This would have required a lot of notching in and around these little two by four bits. I did not do that for two reasons, one, I wanted to kind of get this done quickly so you could see the results. But also it began to occur to me that um, even though there weren't vents on this side of this plastic panel, there are some vents on the other sides. Even though there aren't vents on this side, it did occur to me that um, it might be bad to completely make this compartment airtight. So I decided to leave these gaps here on this side and on that side as well. I still feel like we're going to see some significant improvement when we check that DB measure. Um, but we don't know yet. So the next step, of course, is to put this panel back on and see if this weather stripping prevents me from easily getting it into place. So let's put that in place now. I am noticing that the weather stripping is not holding. So I'm actually just gonna take that off. That did not stay on there particularly well when it started to rub up against the acrylic shell. I am hopeful though that these pieces of foam we put on the brackets down below will help a little bit though. So again, we're going to kind of snap that back into place. Now all that's left to do is to put the corner back on and then fire this baby up and check the noise level. All right, let's fire it up. So as you can see, the very highest register on the decibel meter that we took at the beginning of the video was 87. And now with the changes we've put into place, it was 71. So that's what, a 16 degree decibel difference. That's huge. By comparison, just so you have a good frame of reference, a jackhammer is 100 decibels. So at 87, which was the high we were looking at the but before we made any changes, we were getting dangerously close to jackhammer volume. Now we're down to 71 dB. That's a significant difference for the relatively small amount of time and effort it took for me to do the things that you saw me do. You can do those to your hot tub too if you find that yours is a noisy pig like mine is. 
Anyway, if you like this video, please, please, please give me a thumbs up. It sends a great signal to YouTube. Then smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. I put out new videos each and every week, and I know there's going to be something that you're going to need help with that I'm going to cover either in a past video or a future one. But with that, I'll see you in the next video.